Praise God. So I'm telling you right now, there was so much that was done today in the realm of the spirit. So many got healed. So many received healing. So many received much more than just healing, but received yeah. in, in internal, like a depth that we probably couldn't even put into words. But it will become evident even as you go about and walk and do, you're going to start to see, wow, I am different. I am changed. I'm stronger. I'm standing up straighter. I have a confidence that I didn't have before. There's, there's this, this just resolve on the inside of me that says, wow, I know who I am in Christ. And nothing else is going to shake me. Nothing will move me. Nothing even comes close because I've met with the king. I have met the king. You have met the king. Yeah. Literally, I saw him right here. I saw the glory. I saw his, the brilliance of his glory. I saw the throne. And I knew Jesus was sitting in there. And then yeah. I, I see angels. They came from that side, literally flying in. And it's like in the atmosphere. I saw them outside of the building rushing to get here. They were rushing to get here because the glory was beckoning them. I mean, I've seen angels before. I've seen angels in the room. I've just never seen them traveling to get to where we were at. I literally saw them travel to get to where we were at. And I, I looked and I'm like, well, there was two of them. And I'm like, wow. Like, they understand, of course, in the realm of God's spirit. And 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 they're like, I got to get there. I got to When they got here, they were just enjoying his presence. That's all they were doing. Wow. That's what we were doing. Just to get to where he is at. Just to get to where he is at. That was their focus. That was their priority. It needs to be ours. Always. Just to get to where you are at, Lord. Now, we understand God's within us all the time. Don't be, you know, don't be like, oh, well, that's not theologically correct because God's with us. God is with you everywhere you go. Of course he is. But I'm talking about the tangible presence of God that chooses to come and chooses not to come in certain areas. He chooses to come when he's invited and when the atmosphere is actually created to welcome him in. That's where his Shekinah glory, that's where the heavy weight of his glory is at. Because that's where he's at. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just more of that, Lord. Thank you, Father. So when you know who you are, you become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. When we know who we are, we become a threat. So many of, so much of the time, people think that the enemy is a threat. Oh, that enemy is a threat. Hey, he could be a threat, but you were supposed to be his threat. You are actually supposed to be a threat to the enemy. Somebody's getting yeah. revelation over that. Yeah. We're supposed to be a threat to the enemy. Yeah. In other words, we're supposed to wake up and say, but if the glory of God lives on the inside of me, if the word of his presence lives on the inside of me, if that word is powerful, full of power, and it lives on the inside of me, I'm to be the enemy's threat. You are to be a threat to the enemy. And you have to understand that that which is he who is greater inside of you is greater than he who is in the world, right? So you're a threat to the enemy. Say I'm a threat to the enemy. Because I know who I am in Christ. So you are, the, you are the greatest threat to Satan and to his kingdom here on earth. Let's go to Jeremiah 1.10. I'm going to start in verse 5. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. And it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Say, God knows me. He knows my name. Before you were born, I sanctified you. It means I set you apart. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Say, I'm appointed. I'm appointed by God. I've been set apart. He knows my name. And verse 6 says, Then said I, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth. For you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you. The Lord your God is with you to deliver you. He says, do not be afraid of their faces. He says, I am sending you. I am sending you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. God speaks to you to tell you what to speak. Are you listening? Yes. 
When we listen to the Spirit of the living God, then what He does is He brings in all of heaven. He brings in the resources. He backs Him, His Word, He backs it up with His literal, tangible presence. And that's what we just experienced. Because we listened and we did what He told us to do. Do you realize how many turns we miss because we don't listen and we don't do? How many turns, how many, how many areas in life we kind of turned this way and we missed what he really wanted to do? Say, Lord, teach me not to do that ever again. Hey, every single one of us have been guilty of that from time to time. But Lord, teach us to never do that again. We want to be so in tune that when you even just look the other way, we are already sensitive in our spirit, man. We're like, oh, something's up, something's up. Something. I may not know what it is, but I got to stop. I got to be still and know that he's God because he's doing something. Even though you didn't see or hear, but you knew something, something, something just shifted. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about sensitivity to the Lord. I'm talking about intimacy with the Lord Jesus. We receive this walk when we walk a walk of prayer. When we receive this walk, when we pray everything through. Amen. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's keep going on in this portion of the scripture in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand, touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, the Lord put forth his hand and touched his mouth, touched Jeremiah's mouth. The Lord has put forth his hand, church of God. He has touched your mouth. Even if you have not seen it or sensed it, he has touched your mouth, Teresa. He has touched your mouth, Susan. He has touched your mouth and he's directing the very affairs of what you say, the very things that you say. If you yield to the spirit of God, he says, I've already put my word on the inside of you. I've already touched your mouth. I've already touched your heart. And if you yield to me, your future is far greater than your past because I'm speaking out of you. I am speaking through you. I am directing your footsteps and you are being sensitive to me. And this is what he was telling Jeremiah. But he's telling this to us as well. He says, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations. This is your position. Remember, I started off by saying, when you know who you are in Christ, then you become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Amen. We'll look at this verse, verse 10. I have set you over the nations. He has set you over the nations and the kingdom and kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. He has set you over the nations. He has set you over the nations. You might know he's talking to Jeremiah here. He's not talking to me. He's talking to Jeremiah here. No, he is not. The Bible is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't change. He doesn't change. If he said it, he's going to back it up. When he says that the kingdom of it, he says that the government is upon the shoulders of Jesus. Jesus says, as he is, so are you. Jesus is living on the inside of you. Therefore, if the kingdom, if the kingdom, if the government is upon the shoulders of Jesus, sounds like it sounds like dominion to me it, so, it sounds like authority to me it sounds like we've been given access and keys to the kingdom to me right so therefore the same is true for you he's given you access to nations he's given you power to literally destroy to pull down to tear apart to build to plant do you see what i'm saying he has given you access there are some things we need to speak forth to build to plant to pull down to tear apart we need to speak it because what you bind here on earth is what's bound in heaven and what you loose here on earth is loosed in heaven so we have a part to play yeah she's doing a little holy ghost dance right in her seat yeah. yeah see and that is true we we literally have access you literally have access. I have access to the kingdom of heaven. I have access right to the throne room, right to the seat where he is seated. I have access. Amen. And if we have access, which we do, we must access the access. We must pray because that is... Prayer is the vehicle to get us right to that point, that place. It's our prayer life. It is our prayer life. God wants you to pray. He's beckoning you. He's beckoning you to pray. And then he says in your prayer here, I'll read it again. See, I have set this day over, um, set, set this day over you, the nations and over the kingdoms, to, just to root 
out and to pull down, to root out. There's some things that need to be rooted out and some things that need to be pulled down. That's what we do. We take authority. We pull things down. We root things out to destroy and to throw down. Some things need to be, I destroy that foul spirit. I command it right now to be put out, to be thrown down in the name of Jesus. We just did that when we were praying for some of our loved ones. We just did that. But then we build and then plant. You don't just destroy. You don't just uproot. You don't just pull down. You don't, right? But you also need to build and to plant. What are you building? What are you planting? Well, you do it with your words. You do it with the words. You do it with your prayer. I build and I plant. I'm building and I'm planting because I'm putting and I'm speaking. Let it be so. I, I, I loosen unto them the spirit of God's wisdom that they walk in wisdom. I call it unto them now in the name of Jesus. I, I loosen unto them God's compassion. I call it to them in the name of Jesus that they walk in compassion. That they walk in a security. They walk in a, in a holiness. They walk in truth. Truth. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Let the enemy be confused and confounded by your steadfast obedience to the Lord. Let the enemy be confused and confounded by your steadfast obedience to the Lord. Amen. Your steadfast obedience to the Lord brings the enemy into a tailspin of confusion. Amen. Your obedience to God. Your persistent obedience that I'm not going to fret. I'm not going to worry. I'm going to praise. I'm going to thank him. Yes. Your consistent yes. obedience yes. unto the Lord literally brings the devil into confusion. Amen. You want to confuse the devil? Amen. Keep on praising God. Yes. Keep on thanking God. Yes. Keep on. When it looks like things are horrible and in the natural you want to say something negative and everyone around you is saying the logical thing and say, why don't you just be logical you know you're not rational right now you're not you're not rational right now you're in denial how many of you heard that you're in denial well 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 let me tell you it's only by faith that the mountains are going to be moved and even a mustard seed faith so i'm so thankful you can call it denial but i call it faith right and so people just want to go and they just oh just in the natural you need to reason you know you know what it's only by faith that I'm going to please God. And if I'm already found it in the word and I already know the will of God, then I don't need to sit there and stand in the natural when I got the supernatural that's backing me up. We already know what the word of God says, right? When you know what the word of God says for your son, for your daughter, when you know what the word of God says for your healing, when you know what the word of the Lord says for your life, you have the word on it. Everything else is going to lie. Everything else is going to be basically a, like a lie. It's going to fail in comparison. It won't even stand a chance when you stand on truth. Come on. The truth will come to pass, but you got to stand. So that's the building. That's the planting. It's not just the binding, the loosening, the, the you know, commanding to go, but also the building and the planting. We need to have more confidence in what we call in than what we kick out. Amen. Right? We need to have more confidence in, okay, come, you can kick a bunch of stuff out, but then you're just left empty. What are you calling in? What are you loosening unto yourself? What are you loosening? What are you calling unto yourself, to your family, to your children? You can kick all these rebellious spirits, homosexuality. You can kick all these things out. But what are you calling in? Because a house empty, vacant, standing there empty and vacant is just going to, is an invitation for seven more demons, seven times stronger. So so, so good. Yeah. It's, it's just an invitation for something worse. Yeah. So call in the truth. Call in the power of God. Call in his mercy. Call in his, his intimacy. Call in his compassion. Call in that the mind of God, that they have it. They have it. They have it. They have it, they have it now, today. Yes. Call it in. Thank you, Lord. So good. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't consider it strange if you find yourself fighting major battles. You know, the more obedient you become to the Lord, uh, sometimes the more battles that you, you recognize you're fighting, yes. but yet you also see the strength of God in you. Don't, don't, be, don't be deceived. Don't, be, don't, don't allow it to discourage you or distract you or just get you down. You know, it's like, oh, again, oh, again. No, that shouldn't be the answer. Not, oh, Lord, again. If that's where you are at, say, Lord, I need to be refreshed. You know, if that's where you're at, and that's just an honest statement, we've all been there, but but that can't be your go-to. If you're at, oh gosh, again, Lord, how long? Okay, that means you need to take some time. You need to take some time aside and say, Lord, I need to be filled up. I need you to fill me up because that cannot be my response. 
Because, you know, in, an, in a battle, in, you know, a soldier that's dressed for battle, if that was his response, oh my gosh, they're after us again. Okay, take that person out of the line, please, because they're about ready to die. Because they're too weak. There's a time where you just feel like you need to break, right? You do, okay, well, then you need to spend more time in the secret place because you need to get filled back up so that the attacks that come because you're pressing into the glory, it, it doesn't cause you to go, oh, no, Lord, again. No, instead, you're like, I've got the word of God. It's in my mouth. It's in my heart. It's near me. I mean, instead, you just sit there. I'm going to use that sword. The sword is the word. I'm using it, and no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. And you're going to stand not just for yourself, but all those that God has called you to be standing for right so when you feel harassed chance know that chances are you are opposing the enemy's kingdom and he just hates it and he is trying to get you to be distracted but it's not going to work say it's not going to work psalm 107 1 and 2 says oh give thanks to the lord for he is good let's do that right now let's give him thanks and praise oh we give you thanks we give you praise for you are good god you are good you are good your mercy endures forever Let's say that again. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Oh, I give thanks to you, Lord. You are good and your mercy endures forever. His mercy towards you. We all need his mercy. His mercy towards us, it will endure forever. It doesn't change. It doesn't run out. It doesn't run out. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. That's all of us. He has redeemed us from the hand. And so he says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So we're saying so. We're saying that we're redeemed. We're decreeing it. We're shouting it from the rooftops. We've been redeemed. We've been healed. We've been transformed. And we are going to say so. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father God. Let's go over to Matthew 19. Let's go over to Matthew 19. Because it's really, really important. Uh, we get some of these scriptures in our spirit, man, because, okay, I'm going to turn to Matthew 19, and then I want to finish this thought. Okay, Matthew 19. Okay, it's verse 26. With men, all things are impossible. With God, all things are possible. Okay. This is the thought that I was, I wanted to finish. So we are pressing into God's glory, aren't we? And we do so, we're doing so corporately, and we're seeing incredible, incredible moves of the spirit. And it's different each time. Sometimes we'll just get a lot of deliverance. Sometimes we'll get a lot of physical healing. Sometimes we'll get, we've gotten financial reports, people being receiving miraculous financial blessings. It's different, but sometimes it's like, oh, the glory is so thick we can barely move, right? But regardless, we're pressing into the glory realm of God. It's the focus. We know we know that as we stay in focus and just keep our eyes upon him, his glory is manifesting here on earth and you're being changed. Well, you're being changed in the glory. And like I said, the enemy does not like that when you go out there, when you're out and about and he tries to come against you in ways that you're not aware, tries to get us when we're off guard, you know, in, in ways that you're not thinking would even equate or relate. But we must know this. The same authority that you have here is the same authority that you have out there. It is the same persistent authority, but you must remember, listen, Lord, put me in remembrance because I'm not going to go out there and be deceived because that's the enemy's plan, right? And so the warfare that some of you guys are, are experiencing, the warfare comes in little, in tactics and it's very, it's, it's very um, everyday-ish. It's very everyday-ish. You get frustrated with one another. You are irritated with someone, whether it be here in this church, on the team, or at home, somebody in your family, but you're irritated, you know? And it's like they do the same thing all the way, and you get irritated. These are tactics of the enemy church. This is what he's trying to do to get you to be removed from that place of glory that God is lavishing and pouring out yeah. more and more and more. Yeah. He's pouring out more and more and more, but the enemy's trying to rob from you. He's trying to steal it from you, and he does to many people. Let it not be you. That's why we're exposing the ways of the, of the enemy, the ways of the world. We're exposing it so that you don't take the bait. We don't want to take that bait. You were called to walk in the glory and in the fire of God. You were literally called to walk alive and not dead. Say, I'm alive. I'm not dead. The flesh is dead, but the spirit of God in me is alive. 
God. We are alive. That's why when you're dreaming, some of you, and I know because I've spoken to you, but even in your dreams, even your dreams are shifting. Even in your dreams, there's a change that's happening. You know, you're praying in tongues. Even in your dreams, you're waking up and you're feeling like, wow, you had an encounter with God. Even in your dreams, things are shifting. And for some of you that might say, it's not happening to me yet. Well, hang on, because you can't be in this realm and you can't be a part of this church and not receive what I'm talking about. Just by being planted here, you're receiving because you're close enough to the glory. Just get close enough. Just get close enough. Just get close enough. It's like get close enough right there to the water. Just get, as you get close enough to the water, you start getting refreshed. You feel the, when the weather is the cool breeze just because you're close enough. When you're getting close enough to the glory, things are shifting in your life, even in your dreams. Even in your dreams. So all of this, we love that part. Yes. But we got to be wise. The Bible says to be wise, to be innocent as doves, to be wise as serpents. Right? So we don't want to, we don't want to lose any of this. We don't want to go not even one step backwards. When you're irritated with somebody, when you're frustrated with somebody, just give them grace. Remember, we said it doesn't matter. Everything is going to burn. It's just our relationship with Christ that's not going to burn. Everything else, it fails in comparison. So let it go. Let it go. Like you were saying, you, you realize forgiveness was something God was giving you. To, we're going we're gonna to forgive and we're going to let things go. It's a choice. Because, you know, when you see, here's the thing. When your eyes are on Jesus and his beauty, his realm, it's easy to let things go. Because you're literally drawn into his kingdom, which is beautiful and glorious. And you realize, wow, I'm tasting and I'm seeing how good the, how good the Lord is. Why would I want to be mixed in this mess? Why, why would I want to give it any power? Right? And so, yeah, don't gravel in the dirt. That was my message on Saturday night. Just don't, you, you were not called to fight in the dirt. Come on, you're ambassadors for Christ. You're called to get up, stand up, and do the will of God. Right? So Matthew 19 and in verse 26 says, Jesus looked at them and said, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible with God. So that impossible situation that's, I think probably just about all of us have one, you know, um, it's possible with God. Amen. It's possible. And you go, okay, that's good. It's possible with God. It is possible with God, but it's possible with you because Christ is in you and God is looking for a partnership. And he's looking for you to partner with him. He's looking for you to partner with his word. He's looking for you to realize, oh, you know what? If I just keep my eyes on Christ, if I just keep talking about the glory, if I just keep talking about his beauty, if I just keep, re and, and I rehearse the word of God, and I let the word of God come out of my mouth, right? Just, just richly coming off my tongue. Then I know that the word that is literally being listened to, because the, the Lord says that his eyes are searching to and fro, his ears are also attentive to the one that's actually leading and depending upon on him when we do this he is not just looking but he's looking to come and to do he's looking to come and to help he's coming because he's your rescuer he's your savior he's the answer to your problems right so so we want to make sure that we yes all things are possible with God but the Bible also says it's also possible with those who believe it's also possible with those who believe go to Matthew 21 remember I said that the vehicle was prayer Matthew 21 and verse 22 says, and whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive whatever, whatever, everything you ask in prayer, believing you will receive everything that you ask for in prayer that is of the will of God. Everything that you ask for in prayer that lines up with his will, when you believe that that thing is coming to pass, you will receive it. Let's read it again together. I want you to hear yourself saying this word. You guys have your Bibles open? Some of you. Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Let's say it again. Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing 
You will receive it. Now make it personal. Whatever things I ask in prayer, believing, believing. Say, I'm a believing believer. Whatever I ask, and I believe. Whatever I ask in belief. Whatever I ask and I have belief, I will receive it. You will receive it. You will receive that which seems impossible. You will receive it because it is possible for everybody that believes. So that means when you're in your prayer closet and you're praying, you have this word of God opened up and you say, Lord, you said it. And so I'm standing on the authority of the word of God. And let me tell you, no matter what, no matter what comes against you, I don't care how high the waters are, I don't care how deep it may be, I don't care how threatening it might, it might be, keep your focus on him. When you focus on him, you get him. When you focus on the storm, you get the storm. Keep your focus on his face, on his word. You have to. You must say, I must. This is the way I keep myself in belief. Because if I don't keep myself in belief, what's the opposite of belief? Unbelief, right? And so the unbelief, do you want to know why some people don't even receive their healing? Unbelief. You go, no, but I have well, there's areas in your life there's unbelief because God says already in his word, he says he's already poured out his spirit. He says in his word that by his stripes you are healed, already are healed. So there are areas, there are strongholds, there are areas and it might go deep. I'm sure it goes deep, but that's why God is revealing. He is releasing things out so that you are not going to walk in unbelief. Not even a little tiny bit, not even a little tiny bit. Yes, and the Bible is, our, this word is our food. It's our food. You know, in Mark 9, 23, this is where it says, if you can believe. Remember, we said all things are possible with God, right? But then I said also, they're also possible with you. So go to Mark 9, 23. Because we're not going to put on God what he says, hey, it is a partnership. Oh, are we, you need to do your part. Mark 9, 23. He says, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. There is nothing that cannot happen in your life that is of the will of God if you just believe. Keep on believing. It may not happen tomorrow. But keep on believing. Amen. If you keep on believing, and belief is not, is not, um, it, it's an action verb. Okay, belief is something that's in motion. There's, it's, it's not just dead. It's not just dormant. Right? There's action behind it. Your belief has to have action. Your belief has to literally have the word, which is alive. There's action in the word. It's alive. Right? The word is alive, it's not dead, living and active. So your belief cannot just be dormant. Go, okay, I believe, oh, I believe, I believe. But you're doing nothing with what you say you believe. You just, I believe, I believe. No, you don't. You're just, you know, maybe this much. But until you get the word of God speaking out of your mouth, that no matter what you feel, all of your children are going to be taught of the of the Lord. No matter what you said, Lord God, that you would you would bless us beyond our even our wildest imagination. You said, Lord God, you said exceedingly abundantly above and beyond. When you get the word, because now you really believe, you start to get that word, which is alive. Now we go from something that's dormant to now something that's living, and only living things are going to produce life. Dormant things don't produce anything. So dormant faith is not going to produce, but but life is living faith is living faith is when you get the word behind your 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 mouth and start to speak right but but what happens a lot of times is the enemy comes and knocks at our door and we don't let jesus answer we answer ourselves we answer with our emotions we answer with our thought our rational thought our common sense thought. We answer. We're not to answer. 
We're to let the Lord answer through us. We're, let to, we're to let the word dwell richly on the inside of us. So therefore, when we open our mouth, it's Jesus speaking and not us. We need to let Jesus speak and not us. Yes. And he says, I'm watching over my word to perform it. Let Jesus speak. So we have to train ourselves. And that's okay because he'll help us. He'll help us. He'll help train us. If you ask him, Lord, help us, every one of us, teach us how to do this consistently, not just when we're at church, not just when the message is about this, but Lord, every day, Lord God, even to the point to where even in our dreams, because our spirit man is so trained, even in our dreams, we are now literally speaking and responding, even when it's a warfare dream. We're responding with the word of God. We rise up with the word of God. We rise up with the tenacity that says, oh no, because greater is he on the inside. Uh-uh, get behind me, Satan. Even in our dreams, instead of waking up and going, I think that was a warfare dream. Was it the war, the Lord or was it, or, or was it the enemy? Like, which one was it? Okay, that's fine. We're all, we've been there, you know, we, and we have them from time to time. But what about if in our dreams, what about even if in our dream, we have the tenacity, the stance, yes. the posture to literally say, in the name of Jesus, no, ah, I forbid what Jesus forbids. I allow what he allows. That which is not coming from God, access denied in the name of Jesus. Father, that's what we are all contending for. And it's possible. And the vehicle is prayer. The vehicle is a prayer life. Ask. And we just asked. So you can expect to believe. that We have to believe it. And you can expect to receive it. Because we have belief. When you have belief behind it. And that's why when you get up from your prayer time, you get out of your prayer closet and you've just prayed and prayed. That's why you're just, you know, you've got not even a care in the world, not even a care in the world because you just handed it all to Jesus. You just received what he gave you. And now you know that you know that you know that no matter what, it's going to come to pass because you already have a partnership with Christ. And that partnership, he doesn't break his covenant. Amen. He doesn't break his covenant. Amen. Amen. So we're going to let the word answer, not our emotions. We're going to let Jesus, which is the living word, answer. Amen. Amen. Wow. That was just page one. <laughs> so God's word never fails in our lives. In every area of our life. Oh, my goodness, Lord, you're so good. Every area of my life. The word will never fail me. Every area of your life, the word will never fail you. And so the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, I'm going to turn to Proverbs, to incline our ears to his sayings, to his word, so that we will literally have everything that he has spoken. It says it's life and health to a man's whole body. That's right. That's right. Proverbs 4. And in verse 20, my son, give attention to my words. He wants us to pay attention to his words. Give attention, pay attention. Incline your ear to my saying. When you, when you give attention to, you're literally listening. Not just what's at face value, but what he's trying to speak deeper, more intimately to you, right? So incline your, he says, give attention to my words, incline your ears. Do not let them depart from your eyes. That's why it's important to open up your Bible, to read it, to let the word be right here, right in front of your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. The word is life and the word is health. Say the word is life and the word is health. The word is life and the word is health. It says it's life to those who find them. It's not life to you if you haven't found it. Because what you don't know can hurt you. What you don't know, you can't receive from. The word is life to those who find them. Now we know that Jesus is the living word, but he has a specific instruction that he wants to give us. And it's found in his word, the living word, right? So it's life to those who find them. That's why we have Christians that are lifeless. 
because they haven't understood life is in the life giver. But the life giver who lives on the inside of you literally wants to come up and out of you. But you need to know his word in order for that life to come out. Otherwise, you have a gift that you haven't opened up. And you could do nothing with that gift that you haven't opened up. Because it doesn't serve you at all. It's just sitting there. But the anointing of God. What I'm talking about is the anointing that this, when you understand the word and you walk in it, there's an anointing that's going to come upon your life. That's right. That anointing is what breaks yokes. That anointing is what literally destroys agents of Satan that are trying to come against you and, and what God has entrusted for you. Your family. I don't care if they're in the home or not. It's still your, God has entrusted you. Spouses. Spiritual sons and daughters. Right? Yes. And more. We just, that's just the beginning. So it says, keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to those who find them. And not just life to those who find them, but health to your, all your flesh. The word of God is life to your whole flesh. It's health to your whole flesh. It means yes. it's medicine to your body. Yes. It's health to your flesh. I've told you this before. I'm going to tell you again. When you get healed, and you come to a service and you get healed, right, in the realm of God's glory, whether we're praying or not, it doesn't matter because it's God's presence here. And so you get healed. And sometimes when you walk away, you leave, you go home, whatever, and some of you will say, I lost my healing. And I know that some of you have said that. And you come back and you ask for more prayer. And that's fine because we're going to be here to pray for you. But what about you stand up in your own authority? Yeah. How yeah. about you stand up in your own authority right at the beginning yeah. of when that thief tried to come in to steal? Yeah. How about if you stand in your authority and say, what? Oh, no, devil. I was healed of the glory and healed I remain. You don't get to have access. Who do you think I am and what do you think you're doing? But out of here, the minute that pain tries to return, the minute. And don't say, but it didn't work because I did that, but it didn't work. Contend, contend and contend again. And like I told you on Saturday, let your voice be the last voice that is heard. Don't let the devil have the last word. Let your voice be the last voice that is heard. Right? So you got to contend. Keep on contending. Keep on standing. Yes, you can come and get prayer. But don't just come and get prayer, but not do your part. Don't just come and get prayer, but then don't stand in your own authority and say, in the name of Jesus, that, that devil is out of here. That pain is gone. No, it's not mine. Return to sender. Return to sender. You're returning it back to the devil is what you're doing. You're returning it back to the pit is what you're doing. 